What's going on guys? John Alder from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at hex plots for pandas and python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at hex plots for matplotlib, pandas, and python. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership to all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at hex plots. So this is a hex plot, if you're not familiar with it. Very cool, very interesting, just a really cool way to visualize your data using pandas and matplotlib. So let's come over here to this new notebook I have. I'm calling it hex. And I've got our starter code that we've always been using here. We're importing pandas as PD, numpy as MP, generating some random numbers and doing this matplotlib inline thing so we can do our charts and graphs in our Jupyter notebook. And I've just got 500 points of data here and columns of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And it's just generated some random data. So let's come down here and let's create a hex plot. Now hex plots are very similar to all the other plots and charts we've been doing so far. We just call our data frame. So my DF, that's our data frame that we've named up here, right? And then we could just call dot plot and then set the kind equal to hex bin. So this is a hex bin plot. Now, if we run this, we're going to get an error because like some of the other charts and graphs, we need to designate an X, Y coordinate. So let's set our X equal to say our Monday column. And let's set our Y equal to, I don't know, say our Tuesday column. Now, when we run this, we get this hex plot, right? Now, this isn't very useful. I mean, it, I don't know, it looks kind of neat, but this is, you know, we can't really see anything from this. So what we're going to want to do is change the grid size of this. So let me copy this, let's come down here and let's change our grid size to something like, I don't know, 10 or so. And when we do that, boom, we get this sort of honeycomb hexagonal chart thing here that is sort of like a heat map, right? So the, the higher instances of a thing are in darker and the lighter instances are the lesser count numbers. So this basically puts your data into bins and then, you know, gives, gives them weights like that. So we can change the size of this. We could play around a little bit. So say 25, that makes it smaller. The bigger number makes it a smaller, you know, smaller numbers. And maybe that's a little more interesting. We get more data in here that way. I don't know. You could just sort of play around and find a size you like for your particular set of data but very, very cool. So I'm gonna put this back to 10 because I think that looks really neat and uh, very cool. So we can come down here and just like other charts and graphs, we can give this a C map to change the color. So we would just go C map and then set the color. Um, magma is that one I seem to remember. Oh yeah, <laughs> very, very dark and crazy. Uh, let's see, what were some of the other ones? Wistia, I think was one. Oh, and if you don't remember, you could just head over to Google and type in matplotlib and then cmap. You'll get this page that pops up at matplotlib.org that just lists all of these different colors you could choose from. So there's our magma that we just saw and all the different options. And all of these will work in your hex bin. So very cool. Play around with that. Now, like many things, we can use the other method to create one of these things. So we can go my underscore df dot plot dot hex bin. And again, if we run this, we're just going to get an error because we still have to designate our X and Y. So if we go say Monday and Y equals Tuesday, same thing. And again, we can set the grid size and all the different things just like that. One of the nice things about using this other method is you can learn about them by putting your cursor in the parentheses here and hitting shift tab. And then this thing pops up, we can expand it and we can read all about it. So a generate a hexagonal binning plot, generate a hexagonal binning plot of X versus Y. You can put a C I didn't mention. C will just take another category and, and swap it in there and use that as the sort of the weights. So if we went here, uh, you know, C equals and then put in uh, say Wednesday and ran this, then let's get this out of the way. It would just add the Wednesday as the weighted thing there, right? So uh, interesting. Like I said, though, hit shift tab to uh, read all about this. You could read about the XYC, uh, grid size stuff, other things. Very interesting. Or you just go to Google and type in hex bin matplotlib, and uh, maybe that might be a little bit easier to read. So that's the other method. Using both methods, either methods, we can do the same things that we usually do. So like we can add a title if we want. So let's go title equals my awesome hex plot. I guess technically these are hex bin plots, but I call them hex plots. Everybody else does too. And so we get a little title there. Very cool. We can also add 
Let's see, let's copy this guy. Come down here, we, we can add grid lines. So those are very useful a lot of times. I don't know how useful it is in this situation. We can sort of already tell, but eh, very cool. And just that easy. So those are hex plots or hex bin plots, if you want to call them their formal name, if you want to be all stuffy about it. Uh, very cool, really neat way to visualize your data and just another tool in your toolkit for using pandas and matplotlib. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students to learn to code just like you. My name is John Alder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.